Take three. <laughs> Good morning, everybody that's tuning in uh, to our Altersgate UMC live stream worship service on Facebook this morning. Uh, to Altersgate family and friends beyond, uh, we're so glad that you're with us today. My name is Pastor Randy Orndorff. Uh, today, uh, with our worship service, Pastor Emily Moore Diamond is going to be helping, and Michelle Matthews. We've got Andreas and the praise team, and we've got lots of folks behind the scenes that are out here helping us to do our streaming today. Uh, these are surely challenging times, and uh, not being able to attend worship today uh, can be a little bit disruptive to the normal rhythms of our lives, no doubt. But that said, we are gathering together wherever we are now to worship God. This does lead us down a little different path on our Lenten journey, uh, where we have been learning about the God we can know. And uh, as we worship online, just realize we're all still on the Lenten journey together. Our focus has been on the I am sayings of Jesus out of John's gospel. Today our theme is I am the light of the world and surely we need God to light our way right now. So wherever you are, uh, we want to encourage you to reply with a good morning. I'm here. Hello. Maybe the peace of Christ be with you and join in worship as we pray together, sing together, give together, be inspired and encouraged through the message and receive further encouragement and support as the service continues. So let's join our hearts together and pray as we begin worship today. Oh, loving God, thank you for your abiding presence and for the assurance that you know all things and are still in control. We know Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And as we gather our hearts for worship, draw near to us, calm our restless minds, and at times our increased anxiety, and help us now stand firm in our faith, allowing faith and hope and love to abide and remain. Come, Holy Spirit, and illumine our path and our days and our challenges with the light of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun 
shining down on me when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, blessed be the name of Lord, blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. And wherever you are, the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Would you pray with me? Creating God, shine your light on our time together and into our hearts this day. Open our eyes to understand how you are our light and how you want to guide us through these days. We especially pray for your light to shine into the concerning situations that are at hand. Lord, we lift up to you family and friends and neighbors far and near. We lift up to you, Lord, today those who are struggling with their health and all the caregivers, those who are grieving, and, Lord, those who have so many concerns. Shine your light now into the places in our lives where we need guidance in deciding how to be faithful to your call. We pray in the name of Christ, our undying, unwavering light. Amen. <laughs>
Well, good morning, and once more, welcome to Aldersgate United Methodist Church. Um, it would be a joy to see your faces this morning. Instead, we get to see you through our Facebook connection and live stream, and we would love to know, as Randy said earlier, who's here. So please send us a message on Facebook. Let us know you're here. And if you have prayer concerns that you would like to share with us, please email them to the church office at connect at aldersgate.net. Again, that's connect at aldersgate.net. And some of this information will be appearing on the slides that are also part of our live stream this morning. I want to share with you a special way to greet one another. If, uh, if you were here and we were able to be here together in person, we would share with one another a new way to pass the peace of Christ. So if you happen to be watching this morning with others who are with you, we would invite you to learn this new way to pass the peace with one another. So you'd put your right hand on top of your left hand and flip them together and come out like this as a sign of peace. And this is with and then you. So it's peace be with you. And then you can respond and also with you like I got you. And I'll send you peace right back. So we'll try it with the praise band and you try it if you're watching with other people at home. And so we'll say, peace be with you and also with you. Great. I want to share too some special information. We, of course, aren't able to take up an offering this morning, but that's something that we can do online these days. You uh, can also text giving to the church. You can text the word Aldersgate to the number 73256. That's one option. That's also listed on the screen. And then you're also invited to mail in your check or you can set up giving online. There's a special page on our website that is aldersgate.net slash give. So we know that the financial needs of the church will be ongoing even while we are closed to the public during this time. So we would encourage you to continue to give of your gifts, your tithes, your offerings as we give not only those gifts but also our words and our lives and our hearts to the God whom we love and serve. I want to share too that we have a special mission opportunity. A Rising Hope Mission Church has shared with us that they are unable to have their food pantry open for guests to come in at this time. So what they are doing is putting bags of food outside of the food pantry and then patrons can come and pick them up there, but they're running short on bags. So if you've got some paper bags that you'd like to drive over to Rising Hope Mission Church, you can just leave them outside. They would love to pick them up. They also have some office hours very limitedly uh, so this week. But paper bags are their preference. Plastic bags would be fine, but that's one way we can still be in mission with our neighbors and we'll be sharing more mission opportunities uh, throughout this week as those become available and we are made aware of them. We also want to share that we have made certain changes to our own way of life uh, as a response to COVID-19. You are already aware likely that our church facilities have been closed to the public and we will be having meetings if possible by phone or postponing them or having meetings by a Zoom if, uh, if we're enabled to do that. Also want to share that we would advise groups that would ordinarily meet off-site to use caution and stay in touch with one another by phone uh, if possible. We also are aware that the United Methodist Bishop has directed all United Methodist churches in Virginia to be closed for this week and also next week and then we'll reevaluate. So we'll be meeting for online worship again next Sunday morning and we'll share more information about that during the week. Pastor Randy and I will also be putting out periodic videos so that we're able to stay in touch with you and that we can still be community together in new ways and we'll figure out the best way to do that together. Uh, so please hold one another in prayer during this time because we really wish that we could be with you in person this morning. Uh, our capital campaign is also ongoing and you are probably already aware that we are uh, working toward a one and a half million dollar goal with that in three tiers. 
The first tier works to meet the needs of our debt on the Shepherd's Hall. The second tier works toward uh, facility repairs. And the third tier works to uh, pay down the principal, uh, anything beyond that, on the Shepherd's Hall building wing. And then we have a special guest here as part of our Lenten offering. During Lent, we take up a special mission-oriented offering, and this year we're splitting it. 50% will go to Kingstown, which is our church plant, and 50% will go to our summer mission trips that we'll be taking as a church. So our middle school will be going on a mission trip to the Eastern Shore, and that's later in the summer, and we'll also be sending a team to Wap Mountain Apache and we look forward to supporting them in their summer mission trips, but we're also happy to be supporting Kingstown, which started just about five or six years ago. And we had long ago planned for uh, Pastor Michelle to be with us today offering the message as we wanted to lift up this portion of our Lenten offering. And we have Brett Salmon, who is uh, their music leader at Kingstown here with us as well. And they're going to share with us a little bit about uh, Kingstown. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Emily. Um, you all look real good this morning. <laughs> Y'all look great. Don't they look great? They do. They really do. They look really good. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for having us. We didn't anticipate we would be seeing you like this, um, but we are here still, and I'm grateful to be preaching. And it is a treat because we're online today to have Brett Sammons with us. So who are you, Brett? I am the worship leader at Kingstown Communion. Um, and uh, actually, I've been there for four years now, oh it's hard gosh. to believe. Um, but before that, I actually uh, played sometimes with uh, these guys over here. So it's just a treat for me to be able to kind of be at the same place at the same uh -huh. time because we, we never are anymore. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that's me, kind of uh, my wife, Gina, and I, we, we, um, we came to Aldersgate for a few years prior to that. Uh, our son, Noah, was baptized here. Mm -hmm. So we, we just have a deep connection to Aldersgate and, um, and then Kingstown. Yeah. Uh, so I, I asked Brett um, to share a little bit from his perspective because I could offer to you from my perspective, and you've heard it before, um, all the wonderful things that we think um, Kingstown is doing in the community and why Kingstown is important at this unique time in the church. But I wanted Brett to share because he notices things that I don't notice. And as you can tell, we have very, um, we are, we even each other out in like personality and timber and all of that. And so he sees things that I do not see. And so share a little bit. Well, yeah. Um, so from the beginning, uh, you know, the, from the four years that I've been kind of standing up in front of Kingstown and, and um, leading people in worship, I've just watched it grow sort of week to week, and that's just been amazing. Um, and then, you know, fast forward even to just beginning of this year, um, we just had so many new people kind of walking in um, for various reasons, all kinds of different backgrounds, just, just coming in to, to check us out. And maybe they've not been in church, uh, maybe they were um, disillusioned by church for various reasons uh, over the course of their lives, but for for just different reasons, they've been checking us out and coming back, and then just coming back more and more often. And um, you know, there have been times this year when we, we've had new people, just different ones every week, and it's just great because we're we're still we're still a growing community, but we can still sort of recognize everyone when they walk in, and it's just a very welcoming environment that we try to to create every morning. Um, and then, from my perspective personally, just to be able to be a part of something from the beginning and, and sort of watch it grow like that, it just has a just profound effect on on my life as a Christian, knowing that I'm able to, in however small or large ways I can, um, you know, help lead people closer to Christ and uh, and be a community to them when when they might not otherwise have one. And so, um, you know, we we're small, we're mobile, we meet in elementary school. Um, we, we adapt, you know, sometimes we're outside, sometimes you don't know where we're going to show up, but um, I think that also helped this, this past week with so much uncertainty and so mm -hmm. much, mm -hmm. so much uh, just anxiety in the world that, you know, we're going to be online here in another uh, few minutes uh, doing our service, and it's just kind of like, yeah, we, we're just rolling. This roll is what we do. This is what we do. We <laughs> roll with the punches, we <laughs> and we, we, uh, we, make, we make worship happen. So, uh, um, yeah, so I just think it's such a we're such a key community right now, and we're growing, um, but we still need help to be sort of that financially sustainable community yeah. 
that can just keep going uh, and just do great things in the future. Yeah, so um, let me share a little bit about where we are. Uh, um, to Brett's point, we, we have been growing. We actually had a, a membership brunch scheduled for, for yesterday morning, and the question was, do we cancel it? Like, we're canceling everything else. And so I emailed the group of 11 people who had RSVP'd, and seven still showed up at my house yesterday morning. So we are just are constantly having new people interested, new people interested in joining. Um, the growth is great. Um, this year, in particular, this will... For us, we hope this is the last ask we will ask of Aldersgate. Um, we are so grateful for all that you all have given um, year after year through the Lenten offering and through other ways. But, but this year, we want this to be the last because we are so close to being self-sustainable. Uh, we're making these big decisions right now, like what insurance will we get? What bank will we choose? Uh, and we hope to be completely self-sustaining as of January 1, 2020, um, have our own financial admin running our books. Um, I know Aldersgate has been so supportive, so supportive and we're so grateful, but we are looking forward to the moment where you all can be relieved of that and you can send us off and you can see the fruit of your labor. And so that's why a Linton offering is being collected. And so we're so grateful for it. And we ask that you would give um, towards it as 50% of it is going to the Kingstown Communion. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you Thanks for sharing. Morning. And we uh, will now join in a hymn together. It's I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. Our scripture lesson for today comes from John's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 1 through 15, followed by John 8, verse 12. I invite you to listen for the word of God. After this, Jesus went about in Galilee. 
He did not wish to go about in Galilee because the Jews were looking for an opportunity to kill him. Now the Jewish festival of booze was near. So his brothers said to him, leave here and go to Judea so that your disciples also may see the works you are doing. For no one who wants to be widely known acts in secret. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For not even his brothers believed in him. Jesus said to them, my time has not yet come, but your time is always here. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify against it that its works are evil. Go to the festival yourselves. I am not going to this festival, for my time has not yet fully come. After saying this, he remained in Galilee. But after his brothers had gone to the festival, then he also went, not publicly, but as it were in secret. The Jews were looking for him at the festival and saying, where is he? And there was considerable complaining about him among the crowds. While some were saying he's a good man, others were saying, no, he is deceiving the crowd. Yet no one would speak openly about him for fear of the Jews. About the middle of the festival, Jesus went up into the temple and began to teach. The Jews were astonished at it, saying, how does this man have such learning when he has never been taught? Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? God, our light and our salvation. Jesus, our light and our salvation. Spirit, our light and our salvation. Be with us today. Amen. So Jesus says, I am the light of the world. This is one of those Jesus claims we love. That God is light, and in God there is no darkness at all, and we Christians know this to be true. But one of my favorite preachers, Barbara Brown Taylor, says that whenever we know something about God or the gospel or the life of faith that everyone knows to be true, we are then invited, if we dare to traverse it, into the underbelly of that truth. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. So let's take a second and let's step back from that, and let's step back for a second from the crowd of Christians whose gaze is fixed upon that phrase, upon Jesus as the light of the world, and look in the opposite direction. Because nine times out of ten, there is something just as true back there in that direction, though largely ignored because its benefits are less obvious and its truth harder to embrace. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. John also puts it this way, God is light, and in God there is no darkness at all. And that truth is so central for most Christians, and I'm not not saying it's not true. How could I say it's not true? If I didn't believe it was true, Randy and Emily would have preferred to not ahead of time ask me to preach this, so they would have asked me to sit out this sermon. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. How could I say it's not true? The Psalms are full of it. The Lord is my light and my salvation, the fountain of life and whose light we see light. Some of my favorite passages are full of it. 
The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. The fourth gospel is full of it. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have light of life. What's not to love here? The benefits of faith in these passages are so clear. The light of the world has come to put an end to darkness, to be a lamp in the hands of those who believe. And we all know so many people whose lives depend upon this good news. When they can't see where they are going, when the bottom drops out of life completely, when their prayers go unanswered, they're stranded in this kind of darkness that makes them afraid to even move, and they know that if they can just keep their minds focused on the light of the world, then sooner or later, he will send some bright angels to get them out of there. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. It is by far the most popular version of the Christian faith. But if you turn around and you look behind you, there is this equal and opposite truth that almost never comes up in church. Though it's all throughout scripture, if we dare to look. And that is that God dwells in deep darkness. Jesus is the light of the world and yet The equal and opposite truth is that God comes to people in dark clouds and dark nights and dark dreams and dark strangers in ways that sometimes scare them half to death, but almost always is for their good or at least their transformation. Jesus says, I am the light of the world, But throughout scripture, God seems to be always moving and always working in the dark. The thing about us is that we've made darkness the opposite of light. And if Jesus is the light of the world, then Jesus cannot be in the darkness of the world. So the darkness must all be negative. Just pay attention to the way we use the word dark in like ordinary conversation, right? It's this grab bag of dismal and sinister and tragic effect, like that really dark movie you went to see, or our economy that's not out of the dark yet, or our friend's really dark sense of humor, or how our older brother's just been in a really dark place lately. Or how our kid, despite the fact that we bleed Duke Blue, went over to the dark side and became a Carolina fan. Right, Randy? The only two positive associations I could think of were dark chocolate, dark beer. But it's enough to say that, that no one really ever asks God for more darkness, do they? Please, God, come to me in a dark cloud, God, or a dark vision. Give me that dark vision, God, or, or through that dark angel of yours, God. God, show yourself in pitch black to me, please. Put out my lights so that I can see all that you need me to see, God. Please, God, I need more darkness in my life. No, we say, Jesus, light of the world, shine on me. But when I read scripture, the stories of God showing up in bright light are few and far between the abundance of stories of God doing God's best work in the dark. God comes to Abraham in the dark after telling the old man to sacrifice a heifer and a goat and a ram and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. God comes to him in the dark of ash and black smoke of the fire leading him into covenant with God forever after. And God comes to Jacob in the dark, not, not once, but twice. And the first time in a dream at the foot of this heavenly ladder, and the second time on a riverbank where a man who isn't quite a man yet fights him all night long. And morning lights puts an end to it eventually. But before the man goes 
He gives Jacob a name, a blessing, a permanent limp. The gift that goes on and gives more for those who think God goes easy on the chosen ones. Once you start noticing how many things happen at night in the Bible, the list grows longer. Jacob's son Joseph dreams, dreams, such dreams at night that he catches a Pharaoh's attention even, graduating from the dungeon to the palace in order to become the royal interpreter of all dreams, and, and the exodus from Egypt happens at night, and God parts the Red Sea at night, and manna falls from the sky in the wilderness at night, and that is just the beginning one of the heaviest clusters of darkness in the early books of the Bible has nothing to do with nighttime, however. It comes about three moons into the wilderness story when the people who escape from Egypt are camped at the foot of Mount Sinai. That is where God decides to enter into covenant with God's people. And the Bible says uh, to marry them in the full light of day with Moses as the celebrant. I'm going to come to you in a dense cloud, God says to Moses, in order that the people may hear when I speak with you and so trust you ever after. That is how it happens. God comes in a cloud, in a dark cloud, and speaks to the people from inside a cloud. And the cloud sits on Sinai for days and it's flashing like there's this forest fire inside of it. And when God calls Moses inside the cloud, Moses enters it and stays for 40 days there. And when he comes out again, his skin is so shiny, it says, that people are afraid to come near him. So Moses fashions a kind of cloud to cover his face and a veil that he can pull down when he is not with God to protect the people from God's reflected glory. In scripture, the dark cloud and the glorious light seem to go together. Not just in these stories, but always. It's the truth about God that few are eager to embrace. Take a look at Job, who yelled into the darkness for 37 whole chapters before God snatched him up into this whirlwind and the light of God showed him things too wonderful for him to see. And take a look at Peter, James, and John, who entered another dark and unknown cloud on, on another mountain where they too were overshadowed by this, this glorious, terrifying darkness of God before their faces were illuminated by the light of transfiguration. Take a look at Saul, that religious know-it-all, who was blinded on the road forced to live in darkness on this hard bed in a rented room until the light of the world illuminated the true religion and the gospel he was meant to preach. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And yet God shows up in the dark and waits in the dark for us and with us. And the darkness that is not dark to God can be terrible place for those of us who like our God lit. When we can't see, when we are, we're not so sure where we're going, and, and all that usually helps us find our reference in the dark has vanished inside what seems to be some cloud, we, we begin to believe we're lost and without God's way and without God's light, when the exact opposite may be true. Based on the witness of those who have gone before, the dark cloud is where God takes people apart so that they can be made new. It's the dark cloud of unknowing where nothing you thought you knew about God could ever prepare you to meet the God who is. It is the dark womb where kind of life begins again, at least for those who are willing to lift the veil. 
Jesus says, I am the light of the world. But God does a, a lot of God's best work in the dark. So as you survey the darkness right now, the darkness of, of your life right now, there's a lot going on on the news and all you can think about is what the pain that you're currently sitting with, the darkness of our world, that dark cloud of unknowing that has just descended on us this week, that has led us to worshiping online today instead of in person, the dark cloud of grief, the dark cloud of anxiety, the dark cloud of depression, the dark cloud of hoarding, Jesus is the light of the world, and yet God does God's best work in the dark, and you might be wondering if, if that's good news or bad news. It depends on what you do with it. I do know that there are real benefits to this kind of faith, this kind of light of the world but dwells in darkness kind of faith, though they may not appeal to those for whom God is always light. The first benefit is that you have to slow way down, way down when you're in the cloud. All those things you prided yourself on outside the cloud, your speed, your agility, your job, your education, Your busyness, they won't do you any good inside the cloud, will they? The good news is, though, that slowness has a lot going for it. There's time to use your senses you, you don't normally use when your eyes are, are working fine, right? There's time to wonder where, where you think you're, you're going and, and why you're going there. There's even time for the feelings you usually outrun to catch up with you finally, tenderizing you in all the ways you have worked so hard to prevent them to do that. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And yet God does God's best work in the dark. Another benefit of this faith, this dark cloud and yet light of the world faith is that none of your Usual outside navigational tools can help you in the cloud. Good luck with that compass or that laminated map or that guidebook or, or even the Bible. If, if it's not inside of you, then it's of limited use in the cloud because you can't see it. The good news is that that's all the knowledge you have can only get you so far. Once you enter the cloud of unknowing, it's time to find out what we've, what we've really got to work with, what tools we have that we can just trust when we're walking by faith and not by sight. And then there's this third benefit to this kind of light of the world, deep, dark, dark cloud kind of faith, is that you begin to see how shabby a faith based only on light is. Inside the cloud, inside the quarantine, inside the uncertainty, with everything slowed way down, so that you are more in touch than you may want to be with whose cloud this actually is. The good news is that you can see very clearly how much of your life strategy has been designed to get you where you want to go, and to get a handle on God while you're at it so that you can figure out how to get God to help you get there faster and how to convince God to only be your light and to never be your dark cloud of resistance or discomfort. And when you realize whose cloud this actually is, this becomes a little embarrassing. This can break your heart. And so that you, you hold out the pieces and you can't even see, hear God, like, I can't, I can't see the pieces, I can't see the way. Do anything with this God that you want. 
And I get it, darkness will never be the fad. We're never going to ask for an endarkenment. It's always going to appeal to us to have an enlightenment. Except maybe for the people who are sitting in the dark. Who really know what darkness is like. Who are thinking they must have done something wrong. That God has abandoned them. That they have lost their way. They, they may never find it again. For those who are well acquainted with darkness, to hear the gospel that Jesus is the light of the world and that God does God's best work still in the dark before that light breaks might actually save them on the spot. Because if we, if we haven't already been there, we will be there ourselves. No one who is human gets to bypass the dark cloud. But here's the thing about the cloud of unknowing, which even the, the saints can trust in. It, it's, it's not there to get us through it, like, like a test or a fever or a quarantine. It is, it's God's home. It is the place where, where God dwells. And to be invited into, into that dark cloud of our God is this great honor. Uh, to, to stay a while is even is sweeter yet. And those who come out can be hard to look at, at at first. They're like, where did all that brightness come from? Inside that dark cloud. It's oxymoronic. It doesn't make sense. And they may not have a lot of words to describe where, where they've been, but even... Even the limping ones have a story to tell us they, they would have never chosen it, not in a million years, not in, <laughs> but now that it's happened, they would never give it back. And they know because of it that light and dark are not opposites. It's not that Jesus is the light of the world, but that God does God's best work in the dark. No, they know that because Jesus is the light of the world, because the Lord is our light and our salvation, because God is light and in God there is no darkness at all, God chooses to go to the dark. God chooses to do God's best work there. I offer this to you in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you pray with me? God of light, God of darkness, God who transforms the darkness. It sure feels like we're sitting in a cloud right now, not being able to come together for worship in person. what's happening in stores and schools closing and people being asked to keep distance from one another when we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we need each other. And we know we need you even more. The Lord in the midst of what feels like a big dark cloud Thank you that you sit with us in it. That you do some of your best work there in it and with it. And can transform it into light. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us in both darkness and light. And these days 
I still want to pray for the light to come and grow brighter and brighter. So, Lord, we pray for that today. For you are the light of the world. So come and be with us. Make your presence known. Shine light into every corner of what feels very dark these days that you would dispel it. Be beside us. Take our hands for those who are lonely this morning. Take our hands. Be present wherever two or more are gathered in your name, Lord. We know you are present. Be present with us, Lord. Wherever we sit and worship this morning. For we need you more than we need anything else. We need your light, your grace, and your mercy in a world that feels so very dark. It's comforting to hear from Scripture of so many characters in the Bible who knew what it was to be with you in the dark places of life. And to see how you then transformed it. So Lord, we pray that you would transform what we are living in now. We offer to you every person who is fearful. We offer to you every person who sits in anxiety. We offer to you all of our healthcare workers. And Lord, we want to be together again as a community of faith. We want to welcome one another and embrace one another and sit together in worship and stand together in worship. And we long for the day when we can do that again. So Lord, we trust in you to help us get there. We lift to you all of our prayer concerns, those of our hearts, those of our church, those of our community, those of our nation, those of our globe. We cry out to you from one corner of it to the next, knowing that you hear us and are with us and are the light of the world. Lord, we need you. We need the way that Christ is our refuge and our redeemer and friend. And so we pray together those words that our refuge and our Savior have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I would invite you, wherever you are this morning, to affirm your faith. And this morning we'll use those ancient words of the Apostles' Creed and we can all join in that together as we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Been walking the same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got, got pain, pain, he's a pain taker. You feel lost. He's a way maker. You need freedom, saving. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We're all running to things we know just ain't right. Oh, and there's a better life. Oh, there's a better life. If you, you got, got pain, pain, he's a pain taker. You feel lost, he's a way maker. You need freedom for saving. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got pain. He's a chain breaker. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, you receive it, you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can't feel it, somebody testify. You got pain, he's a pain taker. You feel lost, he's a way maker. You need freedom for saving, he's a prison shaking savior. You got pain. He's a chain breaker. You need freedom or saving. He's a prison shaking savior. You got chains. He's a chain breaker. We want to thank our praise team again for being able to come and be with us this morning. Thank you all for your presence and your gifts and your talents and offering them in use and worship today. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on live stream or if you get to watch it later in the week on our webpage, thank you for being with us. This is new for us. We've not done this before, live stream only, so we're learning. So we ask you to be patient with us as we figure out the kinks in the system and um, figure out ways to have this be most meaningful for you. And if you have suggestions for ways that we can uh, even improve what we're doing together so that you can worship most fully from home, please let us know and send us emails. Connect at aldersgate.net. We would love to hear from you because during this time of uncertainty, oh, we need each other and we need to worship God together. So help us do that in ways that are most meaningful for you. One way to do that, too, is light a candle as we begin worship next Sunday morning. Have your Bibles out, grab a cup of coffee, and find a way to just make that space sacred and special for you. Um, tomorrow you'll be getting a message from both Pastor Randy and from me, and we'll be sending you messages periodically, video messages in ways that we can still be connected with one another through this time of uncertainty. My sister gave me for Christmas this little bracelet that has engraved on it, be still and know, be still and know that God is still God. 
and I put it on this week because I needed to be reminded of that myself. So may we be still and be reminded that God is God and God is the light of the world. So let's get ready. If you want to put your right hand on top of your left and then you can put them back on instruments and we'll say peace be with you. This will be part of our benediction. So right hand over left. May peace be with you and also with you. So the peace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the ever-present Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Three. You believe it. If you receive it. If you can feel it. Somebody testify. If you believe it. If you receive it. If you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. You need freedom, a saving. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker.